virtual work in all its different forms, whether it be telecommuting, virtual teams, hybrid work, can have a major impact on employee well-being. But interestingly, it can be both positive and negative. So let's take some examples of the positive side, right? I think one of the biggest ways it can have a positive well-being impact is because of the flexibility it gives employees to work when they want, where they want, and even to some extent how they want because they don't have a boss kind of looking over their shoulders. And that sense of autonomy is hugely motivating. And then, of course, when you can pick your location of work, then you can locate work to your preferred location, close to home, and that allows you to better balance work and family. And, of course, that translates then into things like reduced stress, reduced exhaustion. And then finally, being able to kind of get away from the office and not be around, let's say, negative co-workers or office politics or distractions can also reduce exhaustion and stress. It's not all necessarily great because if I can pick wherever I work and when I work, the way I can get work done is by connecting using technology. And then pretty soon that can turn into a sense of, gosh, I'm working all the time and from everywhere. And that can obviously have negative well-being effects. And then if you begin to blur the boundary between work and family, then you're going to increase things like work-life conflict. And that increases stress. And then, of course, being away from your colleagues can lead to social and professional isolation. If it can go either way, what determines which way it goes? And so the type of person is definitely a factor. And, and usually because of, say, by virtue of their personality or their skill set or their personal circumstance, certain people are just better equipped to cope with some of the challenges of virtual work and leverage some of its benefits than others. So let me just give you a few quick examples. Uh, if I'm someone who has great self-management skills, I'm very structured, I'm very organized, then I'm going to be able to better use this flexibility that virtual work gives me and this autonomy that it gives me. And definitely if I'm someone who's able to, knows when to disconnect and I'm, I'm not driven to just be connected all of the time, again, I'm going to make use of that flexibility in a little different way. We can also think of the social aspects of virtual work, right? So some people don't mind working on their own. It's okay not to see other people. And some people also are really good socially. They're good at using technology in a really intentional way to kind of reach out and connect with others. And so they're going to deal a little better with some of the isolation impacts. Not all of them are necessarily personalities. Some of them are skill sets that you can learn. So I can learn how to be more self-managing. I can develop strategies, for example, for better managing my work-life boundary. I can, uh, you know, develop some of the skills, my teamwork and collaboration skills. So I think if we understand what some of the challenges are, then employees can definitely develop some of the skills that are going to allow them to better cope in that environment. Leadership is key, as, as we might imagine, right? And so... If we think of some of the challenges I've talked about, there are a lot of things that leaders can do. So if employees are given a lot of autonomy and flexibility, well, if I'm the kind of leader that needs to micromanage everything and look over and monitor my employees, then they're not gonna be able to take advantage of one of the biggest advantages of virtual work, right? So as a leader, I need to be more empowering and give them some leeway. But at the same time, I also need to put some guardrails around that because we can't just have people running off doing whatever they want, right? And so I've got to set a very clear mission, very clear expectations and norms, right? Uh, leaders can do other things as well. We talked about social and professional isolation. Well, leaders can reach out and facilitate that communication between employees and really develop a really positive social climate. So, so the role of the leader cannot be uh, understated, right? I mean, whether it swings towards the positive or negative side really depends on what leaders do. So they're, they're critical.